Everybody says spring training for hitters is about two weeks too long that you just wish that it would start after a month. Are you itching to get ready? Oh, or to get de going? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think this whole team is you know, ready to get back up to New York and get things rolling. But, uh, you know, those extra you know, those extra couple of weeks don't hurt us at all. You know, you can work on a couple of things. Pitchers can, you know, tweak a couple of last-minute things and, you know, just get it ready for the season. You know, when you come off a 100-win season and have to finish in second, I'm sure you're going in realizing that every game is important, right, and getting off to a fast start is going to be uh, probably key. Yeah, definitely. But the big thing, too, is, you know, we've, we've always talked about, you know, winning a series, you know, winning a series. Well, if you're playing you know, three games and win, you know, the first two, you know, we, you know, sometimes, you know, a lot of teams will kind of take off that last day and, you know, those losses, you know, at the end of a series add up, you know, towards the end of the year. So, you know, our big goal this year is not only win every series, but, you know, just try to dominate every series, you know, so what if we win the first two games, let's go out there and win the third one, you know, let's, let's make an emphasis on that to really, you know, because those games add up at the end of the year, you know, those losses at the end, you know, and you win the first two games, lose the last one, that stuff adds up at the end. That's a, that's a really great point. Now, one series that was critical for this team was the one with the Red Sox late that you had to watch because you were injured. How hard was it to watch that series versus the Red Sox, knowing how important it was and not being able to play? Oh, it was tough, you know, especially just, uh, I think, I don't know how many games we were back, but that that, uh, that four-game swing right there was, was huge in the standings, you know, and having to sit back and, you know, not be able to participate in it was tough, you know, but I tried, you know, whatever I could, you know, doing stuff on the bench, either trying to motivate guys, talk to guys, you know, keep things going. But, um, no, it was it was a tough, <laughs> tough four games to watch. Now, Aaron, I did the last two games on Yes with Paul O'Neill, and, and he was marveling at the fact that somebody who was as accomplished as you actually continues to work and how you've changed, like, your two-strike approach. What drives you to do this stuff? Because if you just remain the same, you can still hit 50 home runs, but you've obviously worked on stuff over the one. What's that drive? Is it just something in you? You know, um, yeah, it's just, just me working on my craft and anything I can do to help the team, you know, because we keep, we've come up short the past two years, you know, in 17, you know, coming one game away from the World Series and then in 18. Uh, losing the DS, you know, it's, that sits with you, you know, you, it, uh, I thought about that a lot, you know, during the off seasons after that and, you know, just trying to think of different ways that I could try to improve, you know, what can I do, you know, personally to like help the team, you know, what, what was I lacking that I can improve on that might help the team win, you know, maybe a couple more games throughout the year or just something that will help, you know, put us in a better position. So I felt like working on, you know, kind of a two strike approach that kind of simplifies things for me just to get, you know, barrel of baseball, you know, anything I can do just to put the ball in play. If I do that, you know, there might be an error, a throwing error, you know, maybe a couple more hits, drive in a couple more people. Uh, just, just little things like that. You know, you can never stop working. You know, that's a, the joy and cool thing that I saw actually, you know, coming to my first couple spring trainings and watching, you know, Alex or Rodriguez and Mark Teixeira work and how, you know, even to their last, last season, they were still trying to improve, still trying to work on certain things. So it was... Um, it's, yeah, I think it's just something inside me and something I've seen from a lot of the great ones. Talking with Yankee right fielder Aaron Judge, is there any concern, though, Aaron, that with a, uh, a different two-strike approach where you don't stride as much and lift the leg as much that it might rob you of some power? Yeah, that was that was probably the big concern for me. But, you know, then in, when I tried it in spring training, I think five of my six home runs is, um, in spring training were with the no stride. And uh, I feel like just, you know, being 6'8", you know, 265, it's – you just got to touch, and I think it goes, especially if the wind's blowing out. So um, no, there wasn't <laughs> wasn't any uh, no down um, power or anything like well, that. Well, I think Paul O'Neill said it best. He said, so if he doesn't hit 450 feet, he'll hit it 430. It'll still go. Still works. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how about leadership? Everyone looks at you as, you know, the next captain, the next great leader of this team. How have you seen your leadership in that room develop since you got called up? My, my biggest thing has always been, you know, just just do my job. You know, I feel like this team's a well-oiled machine, and if everybody is going out there doing their part, you know, we're gonna we're gonna win a lot of ball games and do a lot of good things in this game. You know, so for me, it's it just depends on what my role is. You know, if my role is to be, you know, a guy hitting seven, eight, or nine, you know, just kind of being a role player and move guys over, do this and that, I'll do that. You know, if I got to be, you know, top of the lineup, you know, get things going, drive people in, you know, I'll do that. So, you know, my role's changed over the years, and you just got to accept it. You know, there's nothing you can really do except continue to play. your you know, your game and continue to go out there and give 110% for your teammates. So, um, you know, just as the years have changed and my roles changed and, you know, I just got to embrace it or that, that's about it. Aaron, I think it's pretty amazing. I mean, when you consider that you, you kind of got called up in, in 16 and then you really hit your stride in 17. And, and I, I believe that in 19, as Don just said, you're one of the leaders of the team. Has it happened faster than you thought it's going to happen? 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's tough. To, it's it's tough to say, you know. It just kind of stuff like that just kind of happens, you know. Uh -huh. You don't really can't really prepare for it. Can't really, you know, just know. Okay, next year is going to be my year. It's just something that kind of happens from, you know, just being around the guys in the clubhouse and learning your teammates. And it's just sometimes it's just a role that you know just kind of comes up. And I, I've learned from a couple great leaders in this clubhouse already. You know, CC Sabathi and and Brett Gardner, how they, you know, how they just treat their teammates. You know, CC, I remember and. 2015 my first spring training you know I was just trying to stay out of everybody's way you know not getting the way you know I was keeping my head down you know and CC was going out of his way saying you know hey man what's going on how you doing how's the family doing he was he was, he was talking to me like you know we've played together for 10 years so um, you know just seeing that from a you know future Hall of Famer like that you know it really showed me like hey this is this is how leaders treat everybody they treat everybody the same treat everybody with respect and you know, that's how you get you know, respect from everybody, and that's what you've seen from CC over the years. Uh, have you? Did you fill out an NCAA bracket? How are you doing? And what are your thoughts on Zion Williamson? <laughs> I, I stopped filling out those brackets, man. I, I, every <laughs> single time I fill it out, it just some team happens, some big upset, and it just ruins everything for me. So I, <laughs> I saved myself the frustration this year. Uh -huh. But you know, it was man, Zion Williams. He's that is. That's a that's a special player right there. You know, I know he gets a lot of attention, but you know, also the team, the players like R.J. Barrett, you know, Cam Reddish, also you know, his supporting cast with them. They're those are some special players too. So I'm. It was exciting watching that game against UCF, and um, it's uh, it exciting to see how they do in the tourney. Now, all of New York's got their fingers crossed that the Knicks select him. You know, first overall, if that were to happen and he were to come to New York, what advice would you have for him? Because it would be kind of similar, right? The big, huge guy, a lot of expectations. So what advice would you have for him if he ends up being a Nick? Ooh, what advice? Um, I'd, I'd just keep it simple with him. You know, go out there, have fun, um, play hard for the city, you know, because the city's going to see that. And if you're playing hard, giving 110%, they're going to have your back. You know, we got great fans in New York. and. You know, if you're going, if he's going out there doing his job, man, he's going to put on a show for everybody. So just, you know, keep it simple. All right, before we let you go, because I know you have to do some work, uh, everybody in baseball, it seems, young players, Reed Bregman, whatever, signing contract extensions. Is that something that you'd be interested in? Have you and the Yankees spoken about that? No, we, we haven't. We haven't spoken about that. You know, I got, you know, I've got a job to do on the field. You know, so for the most part, you know, I let my agent handle that kind of stuff. So for me, I'm just going to go out there as long as, you know, I'm still under contract doing my thing. I'm just going to go out there and keep playing. So I'll let, I'll let guys making the big bucks handle that. <laughs> That'll be you soon. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Good luck. That's Aaron Judge.